and we kick start this newscast with a space feat the indian space research organization has successfully injected india's electronic intelligence satellites into its first polar orbit the msat was a part of the pslv c45 which blasted off from shri harikota at 9:27 am local time the pslv c45 is also ferrying 28 satellites from four nations there are two satellites from lithuania one from spain and switzerland each and 24 from united states this is the pslv's 47th flight and it marks several firsts to the credit of isro the pslv would maneuver satellites in various orbits and orbital experiments isro said that all these satellites were launched under commercial arrangements it burns for 105 seconds in total and has a peak thrust of 4800 km and to bring us more details and add their precious perspective i am now joined in by mr g madhavan nayar the former chairman of isro he's joining us live for more on this new story mr nayar thank you so much for joining us here on we on to begin with we are hearing that this uh, launch by isro is a first of many kinds you must enlighten our viewers about it hello All right, Mr. Nair, if you can hear me, we've been hearing that this ISRO launch is the first of its many kinds, and you must tell us more about it. Well, I think uh, ISRO has been launching PSLV for quite some time, but this mission is very unique in the sense that uh, in the same mission we are going to have uh, the satellites placed into three different orbits. Right. Uh, okay. Again, what is uh, the, the the commercial activity is also totally visible in this. Uh, 28 satellites from other countries. Right. A major part coming from USA uh, shows that uh, commercially we are establish ourselves in this field. Uh, then thirdly, uh, the fourth stage is going to be utilized uh, for certain operations uh, and carrying out experiments by education institutions or research laboratories. This is a unique platform being provided for the Indian researchers at a very low cost. Uh, uh really if you look at all these things uh, is a very unique mission and uh, the first phase of that has gone on completely successful mm -hmm. i would say to a, a precision which is uh, well beyond uh, normally what one can get uh, so that also shows the maturity of the launch vehicle technology in india Absolutely, very rightly said. It is indeed a very unique mission, as you rightly pointed out. Mr. Nair also would like to ask you, what can we expect from this low orbit satellite, and why is the MSAT being called the spy in the sky? Uh, well, uh, what I understand, I don't have the much detailed information on that, but at the same, what I understand is, it is going to be an electronic monitoring uh, satellite. It will um, uh, monitor the various emissions from the ground. in the rf and microwave uh, spectrum and that will give us an idea about the various activities which is happening on the ground about the ground stations the radar installations and so on so that is going to be extremely useful for monitoring our own uh, country's performance and also for potentially for certain uh, defense applications as well right so you spoke about uh, privatization just a few minutes ago this time to a private company like exceed space is involved in this pslv mission what could privatization mean for the indian space arena uh, well i think uh, as uh, time progresses the demand for pslv gslv and the space crafts are increasing and uh, we have taken a policy decision that we should involve the industries maximally into the realization of these space subsystems in fact it has been policy pursued for quite some time and today nearly 50 to 60% of the work related to these launches are being carried out by the private industry but we are looking forward to a scenario where an industry or industrial consortium should be able to come forward and build the entire launch vehicle or entire satellite by themselves but that is a fairly long way to go but isro is taking a, a very special care in uh, nurturing such industries and bringing them forward right and today's launch sir, it it comes just days after india's uh, mission shakti launch what do you have to say about our progress in the sector of space 
Well, I think uh, I must first compliment the leadership at uh, ISRO, Dr. Sivan, uh, then DRDO, Dr. Reddy, and above all, the enthusiasm and encouragement which is given by Prime Minister Modi ji. This is the reason that we are able to carry out such missions uh, in a time-bound manner and meet the security needs of the country uh, in a very precise and elaborate manner. All right. Mr. Nair, is India borrowing a leaf from NASA <laughs> when it comes to inviting private players to reduce the cost of launches or even bring in more innovations? Uh, well, certainly, uh, you see, as the volume increases, a R&D organization cannot spend that kind of time in the production activities. So for the production activities, definitely the industries are a must. Right. Mr. Nair, lastly, my last question to you is, by opening the satellite launch uh, for space enthusiasts, including children and students, do you think that this move will actually now encourage more youth to consider space sector as a career option? Uh, yes, certainly the space is the cutting edge of technology and probably the ultimate in the science and technology field. So once there are enthusiasts in that, you can find researchers in other fields also. So to attract the student talents to the science and technology area, this will be a big motivating force. Right. Also, uh, sir, as discussed uh, earlier, and ISRO has also made promises that 2019 is going to be sort of a turning point for India's space launches. How do you view uh, the ac space activities in the current year? Uh, well, certainly up to now, Whatever launches have been declared, it has gone on the dot. Uh, so it's with uh, precise planning and implementation. And uh, for the current year, uh, nearly 37 missions are being planned. This sort of record as far as this is concerned. I remember when we were, uh, we have built the PSLV, we were struggling to make two launches in a year. But against that, today, a dozen launches of PSLV are being done. Mm -hmm. And not only that, the GSLV and the GSLV Mark III especially the one which is going to be used for the human space flight, is going to be launched uh, again this year. Well, that speaks volumes uh, in itself, as you rightly pointed out, from two launches of PSLV happening during your time now, growing it to a dozen indeed speaks volumes of how DRDO and ISRO have made progress. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Nair, for bringing us all those details and giving us your precious time on World is One. I'm also joined in by Siddharth MP, uh, who's joining us live from Sri Harikota with the latest. Let's quickly go across to uh, Siddharth. Siddharth, today indeed has been a historic feat for India as uh, we all know that ISRO has launched the satellite to locate enemy r radars. How, tell us more about this spy satellite. Well, between various military communication devices. So it could be a surface-to-air missile uh, defense system or it could be a military base. And when these... Uh, it, uh, there seems to be some uh, technical error out there, but this is the latest that we've brought to you all the way from Sri Harikota, where... 28 satellites have been destined to their orbits. Of course, another one is the MSAT. As we said, it is the spy in the sky, supposed to aid electronic intelligence surveillance by ISRO. And there were other 28 nano satellites of global customers that have also been placed in the orbit.